Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. I am going to show you how to install Python and Kira's and TensorFlow completely from scratch. I'm assuming that you don't even necessarily have Python even installed to, uh, to do this. For students in my deep learning class, this shows you how to get the needed class set up for compiling and running the programs that we do in class. If you're just interested in Keras and TensorFlow in general, this shows you how to completely install the environment for Windows. I am focusing on CPU installation on this video, but I will show you how to do GPU installation in a future video. First thing we want to go is do is go into Windows Explorer. So I'm going to assume that you might be installing this from a previous attempt at this. So we're going to completely clear out my previous version of Python to do this. Now we will be using the Anaconda um, version of Python. So here it's, you can see Anaconda 3. It's installed basically in my user directory. There's other locations you can install this to, but often it installs it to your user directory, so that way it's installing for just your particular user account. I am going to completely delete it. Okay, now that that is deleted, we can proceed to install it. Your delete might not take that long. I tend to install lots of things and experiments, but I always make sure that I can completely build it from scratch again. So that's what I am doing now. I like to use the, uh, the Anaconda installation for Windows. So let's go ahead and go to there. Anaconda Python. Now with Python, there are two predominant versions. There's Python 3 and Python 2. For my class, I use Python 3, 3.6 and beyond. So 2.7 is kind of its own, own sort of separate Python world. Many of the packages are released for both of these. Python's almost two programming languages in one, in one sense. But we're going to use 3.6, and we are going to use the 64-bit uh, the version. And I do not need to give them my email. You just wait for this to download. It's a reasonably quick download. All right, then you can just go ahead and run that. Okay, next. Of course we agree. This is where we get into if you want to install it just for you, in which case it'll put it in your user directory, or all users, in which case it'll put it in your root directory. I am going to go ahead and install it just for me. So again, it's putting that into that directory that you saw earlier. Now it's going to require about about 2.4 gigabytes, so that's why it took so long to delete, but then I had also installed a lot of stuff on top of that. Now this is a somewhat tricky window, and this causes my students some degree of trouble. So you might have multiple Pythons on your computer. You might have other software that is dependent on Python, and they might have installed Python and put it into your path. Your path means if you launch a command window, just a normal Windows command window, and you type Python, whatever is in your path is going to uh, be launched. Now, I just deleted my Python, so that doesn't work. 
if you are trying to run Python and you believe you have it installed and you're getting a window looking like that, that means either one of two things. Either you don't have Python installed, actually one of three things. It's not in the path, or if you installed it from here and told Anaconda not to put the new Anaconda into your path, then you need to launch Python from a special terminal window. So normally for my own computers, I do this. I add it to my path. Now this all turns red and it warns you, you might be breaking stuff, but I like to break things. And I, it's one of those don't try this at home moments, I guess, but I, for this example, am going to not add it to my path just so that I can give you a demonstration of, of what that looks like. If I did add it to my path, that just means that I can go to a normal Windows command line and, and run it. But here I will have to use the special Python or Anaconda Python installed one. So if you're a student following along for my class, this is probably the direction you want to go. And it begins installing. And I guess it's time for another coffee break. Don't need to learn more about the cloud and don't need to learn more about support. All right, now that that's installed, if we go to a DOS prompt and you try to run Python, it does seem to pick that up. I think what it did is it probably saw that I did not have a Python already, so it does look like it's picking it up on my main, uh, my main path. So by the way, use the quit function to quit, to quit Python or just close the window. But if you, if that's not working, you need to launch the Anaconda prompt, the desktop application that they installed for you. So if you run that, this is a lot like a Windows DOS prompt, but it actually provides access to, uh, to the Anaconda Python that you just installed. So you should, you should be able to run Python from here. And that gives you the version. Remember to use the double um, minus sign, not the single one like I incorrectly did up there. All right, the next step is now that we have Python installed, we want to put in the pieces that we need. So to do that, I am going to go to my class website. There's a link to this in the description, at least there should be. And this is the part that you want. I am going to go ahead and copy that. Now we just installed Anaconda, so you have that piece. But I'll put a link to this in the uh, in the web or in the description. So now what we want to do is install Jupyter Notebook because that's what we're going to be using to run most of our uh, most of the class examples anyway. So I'm going to put that Windows trying to be smart. Put that over here and we're going to use the the DOS prompt to install these. So I'm going to do conda install and it begins the installation process from the command line. Okay, that was actually already installed from that version of Anaconda apparently. I guess they're bundling that now, which is a good idea. This other command over here is just how you start a Jupyter Notebook. We'll do that at the very end. So I'm going to do conda install scipy. And yes, we definitely want to proceed. Next comes sklearn. 
You'll notice some of these are Conda installs and PIP installs. I use, a, I use PIP when I can, but Conda installs some of these special packages that there might not, they might have uh, compiled C code or other languages that make it difficult, like SciPy. But I can just do a straight PIP install of sklearn, then pandas. Many of these are already installed from the uh, from the base baseline, which was previously not the case. So this is uh, this is nice. I'm going to install pandas data reader that has gives us access to some data that we need. And next comes matplotlib, already installed. Then pillow that gives us access to graphic files. Very important later on for some of the computer vision stuff we do. Already installed, that's good. We'll install requests. Gives us access to web services. Already installed. H5PY. This is binary files, so the TensorFlow can load and save binary files. Okay, already installed. So now we are ready to actually install TensorFlow and Keras. I'm going to go ahead and start a new window of this. This is mainly just so that I can replace this version specific stuff later if I need to. Now we're installing TensorFlow. That version string is just the version of TensorFlow that we're using for this particular semester. Make sure you, if you want the latest, just leave that part off. Just do install TensorFlow. But just to make to keep it compatible, if you are working with my current semester, make sure that you look at the semester module that you put in the right version of TensorFlow and Keras. Okay, TensorFlow successfully installed. There's really a lot going on when TensorFlow gets installed. So if something's going to bomb out, this is probably where it'll happen. At that point, GitHub, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Stack Overflow is, your, is probably your friend. Okay, and that problem you see there, the red, I ran into just the type of problem I was talking about. So TensorFlow installs a version of HTML5 lib, at least I believe this is what's going on, that basically breaks pip install. Such is the wonders of, of Python installs. This kind of stuff happens all the time. The beginning of last semester did have a clean install, but it looks like for now, if you get that red explosion of error up there, what you need to do is run conda install force htl lib. Now, I did not know that simply by divine inspiration. What I did was I copied the last line of the error, which looked pretty descriptive of the problem, and basically searched it on Google and found this solution here, conda install force htl lib, and ran it. Now, if you install it, um, this is the craziest version number I've ever seen, 0 0.99999, but that's, that's what they do. So that is HTML5. You need that version of it installed uh, because TensorFlow installs a later version, which, which causes all sorts of problems. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. And now... I should be able to install Keras without it giving me any more trouble. All right, everything should be installed. One little side step from packages breaking each other, but also a good tutorial on how to how to troubleshoot that. So now what I'm going to do is go into my class um, GitHub directory because it's got some some handy files in there. I am going to run Jupyter Notebook. This should launch an interactive website 
that's really a website running on my local computer that lets me compile and execute Python code and, and a variety of other languages. That's one of the neat things about Jupyter. So I think it's taking it just a little bit longer to start, at least for the first time, because I reinstalled everything. Otherwise, we're about to do our second debugging tutorial. Okay, good, it's up. So you'll notice localhost 8888 is the path. This is kind of the new age way to create, to create desktop software. You just write a embedded web uh, server and you basically it basically is launched and now you have access to all of the, the files that were in the directory. I am going to go to the first module and basically just verify that I can view the course information, which it looks like I can. I put a cell of code down here, a little bit further down. So we can run this and it will tell us the version of Kira's TensorFlow and a few others that we have installed. Now, if you do not have TensorFlow and the others installed, this is where it'll blow up or you'll get the wrong version numbers. All right, and this is a successful run. So at this point, if you followed along, your computer is now set up and ready to go for TensorFlow Kira's and also my course, if you happen to be in it. If you're doing other things, you'll continue to do pip and conda installs and get the rest of your software ready to go. Thank you for watching.